Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're diving deep into drum breaks. We'll be breaking down every part and showing you exactly how they all work together to bring your vehicle to a safe stop. Let's jump right in. Let's start with the drum brake components. Backing plate. The backing plate is essentially the foundation of the drum brake system. It's bolted to the axle flange or spindle and is crucial for supporting the brake shoes and other hardware that make the system function. Without it, the whole system wouldn't have a stable base to work from. Brake shoes. Brake shoes are the backbone of the drum brake system. They're attached to the backing plate, and their job is to carry the brake lining into the drum. A drum brake system has a set of shoes, the primary shoe and the secondary shoe. In a servo system, the primary shoe, also called the leading shoe, is the one toward the front of the vehicle. The brake shoes are held in place by return springs and hold down parts. These ensure the shoes stay in the right position and have the proper clearance. The brake shoe consists of two main parts, the web and the rim. The web is the inner part, and the rim is welded to it to provide a stable surface for the brake lining. The web thickness can vary depending on how much stiffness or flexibility is needed for a specific application. You'll also notice small indented places along the edge of the rim called nibs. These nibs rest against the shoe support ledges on the backing plate. They prevent the shoe from getting stuck as it moves, ensuring smooth operation every time you brake. The brake shoe lining provides the friction that stops your car. It's made of heat-resistant fibers and is bonded with a high-temperature synthetic agent to handle the heat and pressure generated during braking. There are two main methods for attaching the lining to the brake shoe, riveting and bonding. Regardless of the method used, the brake shoes are held in position by spring tension. Wheel Cylinder The wheel cylinder is the part that converts hydraulic pressure from the master cylinder into mechanical force. Inside the wheel cylinder, there's a bore that's filled with brake fluid. The force exerted on the brake fluid by the driver forces the piston inside the wheel cylinder to move outward. Through pushrods or links, this movement acts on the brake shoes, forcing them outward against the brake drum. Brake drum. Brake drum is the surface the linings press against. Brake drums have to withstand a lot of pressure without flexing too much, and more importantly, they need to handle the heat generated during braking. Every time you stop, the friction between the shoes and the drum creates a lot of heat, which needs to dissipate quickly to avoid brake fade or damage. Modern automotive brake drums are usually made of heavy cast iron, though you might also find some drums made from aluminum with an iron or steel sleeve or liner on the inside. Parking Brake Linkage Most rear drum brake friction assemblies include a parking brake linkage. The linkage commonly consists of a cable, lever, and strut system that spread the brake shoes apart to apply the brake mechanically. The parking brake strut plays a large part in many of the automatic brake adjusters. The wheel cylinder to move outward. Return springs and brake shoe hold downs. The shoe return springs pull the shoes back when the brakes are released, and the hold down springs keep the shoes pressed against the backing plate. These springs are key for ensuring that the brake shoes stay in the correct position, ready to engage when needed. Star Wheel Adjuster Opposite the anchor pin, you'll find the star wheel adjuster. This component links the webs of the brake shoes and provides a way to adjust the spacing between the shoes. The adjuster has a threaded mechanism that lets you expand or contract the brake shoes to ensure they have the proper clearance inside the drum. Drum brake operation. When you press the brake pedal, hydraulic pressure increases, pushing brake fluid into the cylinder. This fluid pressure drives the pistons inside the wheel cylinder outward. As the pistons extend, they push the brake shoes into direct contact with the brake drum. This contact generates friction between the brake shoes and drum, which effectively reduces the wheel's rotational speed, slowing the vehicle and eventually bringing it to a stop. Once the brake pedal is released, the hydraulic pressure reduces, allowing the brake shoes to retract and release from the drum, preparing for the next braking action. Thanks for watching. 
If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for more content on how vehicle systems work.